So let's get back now to this first idea I said, that within trellis coated modulation, we're kind of looking at what's happening between the points which are the most distant, not the closest neighbor, which was what we focused on when we were doing the union bout or when we were doing gray coating. When we're doing trellis coated modulation, we're really kind of looking for how we can look at, how we can sort things out into those points which are farthest apart and most robust without any coating. And we'll, we'll see why in a minute. So we're going to do what's called set partitioning. Set partitioning is taking a collection of constellations, points, you know, so a collection of symbols, a constellation, and sort of progressively dividing them until we get down to sets of two. So I'm going to start in the first example with 8PSK. And so we've just given a name from 0 to 7 for the 8 points in 8PSK. The first step in a set partitioning is to take all of the points and divide them into two subgroups. I'm going to take the points, so, so, separating the subgroups, and I'm separating the subgroups with the strategy of at each step I'm going to increase the separation. Of course, it's easy because I have fewer points, so, I, so I, 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 they, they will be farther apart because there's fewer of them on the same uh, space. So, for instance, here, suppose with this assignment of names, I put the even ones over here and the odd ones over there. You know, it's, I'm taking every other point along the uh, unit circle here. And so now, if I look at this separation, well, we can see that, you know, they're all at the same distance. And here, they're all at the same distance, one, um, the m minimum s uh, separation for all the pairs. Uh, are the same separation. And this one uh, would be uh, at a greater distance than this one. Okay, so here using this as the unit circle, this comes to 0.756 separation. And here I've got the square root of 2 or 1.4 as the separation. Now, the next step, I said we keep going until we just get pairs. So the next step is I take this group of 4 and I want to create two groups of two, and I want to get them as far away as possible. I'm always trying to increase the minimum distance. So I'm not going to take two and four together. I'm not going to take zero and six together. I'm not going to take two and zero and four and six. I'm going to take the ones that are, you know, at opposite ends. And so I get zero, four in one group, two, six in the other. And of course, I do the same uh, subdivision here. And now, now you can see that at the end, what have I done in this set partitioning exercise? I have ended up with these groups, four groups of, of uh, two symbols each, which were, you know, what I had this intuition about. These are really far apart. These are really robust. There's very little chance of me making a mistake between zero and four or between six and two, et cetera. And so this set partitioning is a uh, organized way to identify uh, subsets and we're going to use these in a little while to do our assignment of bit sequences to symbols. Before it was a gray code, now I'm looking at TCM for a different strategy. I'd like to mention that this set partitioning works really well even with 16 QAM. Here we have, you know, the 16 points on a regular lattice. And if I take every other point uh, and staggered, then I will get two collections of eight. So you see I took the corner here, I kept it here on this group, and then I didn't take the next nearest neighbor, I took the next one. And here the nearest neighbor, I skipped that, I didn't want that, so I get the next one. And you see that I separate them out, and we can see that the uh, minimum distance is again increasing, and it's also very regular. So I'm not like choosing one, so I have um, uh, you know, it's a, it makes sense <laughs> as a progression. And the next step is I take these eight points and I make them into two collections of four points. And, you know, there's a little more leeway um, on how we could have done it, but this is uh, a very uh, regular, again, and a progression to making the um, a distance always uh, larger. So here was the initial distance. This is 0.2 times that initial distance. Another 1. Point two, uh, square root of 2, sorry, which is 1.4. So 40% more distance 
at, at this point. And when we get down to the last step in the set partitioning, you know, now I've got this collection of four, and I'm looking again at polar opposites, and those are the ones that I'm going to keep into my pairs. And so you can see that here uh, we have a group of pairs, not necessarily a unique um, set partitioning, but a uh, set partitioning which achieves our goals, which is uh, ending up in a uh, collection where the pairs are separated. I have every single one of them uh, as far away as possible. Of course, I could have tried to do you know this corner and that corner, but when I did that, I was going to leave some others that were going to be tight, whereas now they're all even. They're all the same. I use the symmetry of the, the constellation to arrive at one where uh, there's not one that is more vulnerable than another. Uh, they're all, and if I had tried to keep one like really far apart, I would have ended up with others which were too close, closer than this separation that we see here. One more set partitioning that we'll be seeing in a, an example because it's uh, easy to do uh, calculations on, and this is for 8 PAM. So again, pulse amplitude modulation is a modulation in only the I, not in the Q. It's a one-dimensional uh, constellation. And so I have my eight points uh, in the constellation equally spaced, and there's a certain minimal distance which in the um, coordinates for the IQ plane, not the signal space coordinates. We choose easy coordinates, and they're every two, uh, they're spaced always two apart. Now, I do the same set partitioning. And essentially, again, if I uh, call these even and odd numbers, I'm taking even numbers, odd numbers. I'm going taking every other point in the constellation. And then when I go and do it again, again, every other point in the constellation. And again, when I go from two to four to now eight separation in this uh, PAM constellation. So uh, one thing I'd like to talk about is what are we going to do with the assignment of a bit sequence. Because I said, really, this is the point of the set partitioning, is to give us a strategy for doing the assignment of a bit sequence to a given symbol. So here is, the, the, they call it the code word, that will be uh, assigned to each one of these symbols. And so kind of look at this, you know, what's going on here? And, and if you look at what's going on here, you'll be able to observe something, that when I have a pair here, I'm taking the first symbol and I'm making that different between these two, but the last two bits in this sequence, I'm leaving them the same. So one uh, uh, coordinate minus one and seven, or symbol four and symbol zero, uh, are going to have the same bit two and bit three assigned to them, but they're going to have different bits for the first bit. And you can see that's exactly the strategy which is going in with, on with each one of these sets of two in the final set partitioning. That there's going to be one bit that basically distinguishes which of the two in the set it is, but the set itself is going to have uh, two bits uh, which are assigned to it, if you will. So. How do we know this isn't a gray code? Maybe it is a gray code. But why is, does it, is, is it different than a gray code? <laughs> so let's uh, take the time to, to, to compare them. So here is the um, uh, coefficients in the IQ plane, or the, in this case just I, but this is one dimensional. And a gray code we saw previously, uh, well, we saw one for 8 PSK. Here's a gray code for 8 PAM. And you'll notice that in this gray code, I go from three zeros, and now the third bit changes to a one. But there's only one bit that changes. Now I go from zero, zero, 001 to zero, 011. One. Again, it's only the middle bit that changes. And on each one of these transitions, you can validate it that there's just one bit that's changing. That's the definition of a gray code, that nearest neighbors symbols always have bit sequence assigned to them where the Hamming distance is equal to one. Now. What about this uh, TCM code? Well, I'd have to build it up. <laughs> so I start with, uh, you know, minus seven. I say, okay, minus seven was, a, uh, was assigned in this assignment. It's not unique, but in this assignment, 101. And so I go over here, and I, and I just wrote these down for you. 
So on that previous diagram, this is what it comes out to when I sort. And I, I can see that um, uh, the 0, 1 and the 0, 1, it was 1 and minus 7, and so this is, that makes sense. Uh, but in any case, if I look through here, it looks pretty much like a gray coat, that there's one bit that's changing. Ah, except between these two, the coordinates for plus and minus 1, here I have 2. So it's not a gray coat. Something else is going on here. There's some other reason for this strategy. And so let's try and figure out why this strategy works. So we saw the set partition, and now we're going to look at how we do a bit sequence assignment to that set partition. So trellis coded modulation, the T, stands for trellis. And that's our first indication that the coding that we're going to do is going to be a convolutional coding. Because we know that with convolutional coding, we use a trellis in order to do the decoding. So indeed, we're going to do a convolutional coding within our trellis coded modulation. And I'm going to take the example we saw previously for a convolutional encoder. So this should look a little familiar. And we're going to keep this example and carry it into how would I use it in trellis coded modulation as opposed to just a convolutional encoder. One other thing before I continue on, when we saw convolutional uh, encoders, I said at that time that there were two metrics that we could use for calculating distance in the trellis. We could use Hamming decisions, and that this was associated with what we called hard decisions, and that the distance between uh, any two paths or any two sequences of uh, symbols was just determined by the number of bits that were different in the bit assignment for those symbols. So that was a Hamming distance. I said that there was a Euclidean distance which could be used for soft decisions. Now I'm going to use Euclidean distance now for trellis coded modulation. So now we have to really be atten uh, pay attention. So I, di I didn't give any examples when we did um, convolutional coding with Euclidean distance because I knew that we were going to get here and we'd have plenty of time to practice using Euclidean distance. So again, Euclidean distance could have been used in convolutional uh, coding in the decoder if we use soft decisions, but now we're using Euclidean distance because we're going to be using trellis coded modulation and we need it for that. And uh, again, the um, definition of a Euclidean distance is the um, inner product of the two vectors. So I have a, a sequence um, of uh, um, symbols and the distance between them is given by this, uh, and this would be in the IQ plane, the position, and I would get the distance between them squared, and I'd add them all up, and then I'd take the square root of the distance. And that is the definition of Euclidean distance. So now we've seen, we're going to take an example uh, we saw previously, but what's going to be different compared to what we did previously with the same example is that now we're going to be using a Euclidean distance for all our calculations. So remember when we wanted to assess how strong the code word was, how well performing the code was, that we would look for what was called the minimal distance or the free distance. And the free distance, by definition for a convolutional code, we're going to compare a path, which is the path of all zeros, and we're going to compare that with all other paths that start in state A and return to state A. And then we're going to calculate the difference between this path, which is staying all the time at state A, and the other path, which is you know, going uh, away and coming back up. And you know, we, this is one path, and we would have to investigate all of the valid paths uh, that, that would allow that. So that was the definition of free distance, same definition now, except that when we cal calculate these distances, we'll be using the Euclidean distance instead of the uh, Hamming distance. 